Men, women, girls and boys and fisher thems, welcome to fisher Out thems. of Your League. Fisher thems. Fisher thems, yeah. What's that mean? We shouldn't get into it now, but it's just everyone's welcome. Right, never heard it. Yeah. Well done. No, didn't see it's Sam Smith on the one show? Nope. Okay, Google it. Uh, Mark, hi. Hi. John, hi. Hi. Nice chainmail sweater that you're wearing there. It's nice. chainmail. Is it chainmail? Chain what, chain what do you call it? What's that style? It's just a sweater. M&S. M&S. <laughs> Ralph Lauren by Why is there a man riding a horse on the, in, on the right? <laughs> um, just a logo, mate. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are joined, let's get him straight in, by a former teammate of Mark and John's. Mm -hmm. Super League winner, Challenge Cup winner, Mr. Martin Gleeson. Got to say it Mertin. properly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Martin Gleeson. Mate. Ma 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 oh, Any, <laughs> <laughs> Any middle names, Martin? No. no. <laughs> Good you? Catholic family. Good, good talking to them. Oh, Mark, Mark, Mark is giving Martin microphone lessons, Martin. John. The irony, how Martin. far we've come. Know. We are um, Martin, for you safety instructions, welcome aboard the good ship. The life jacket's under your seat. You can upgrade to move away from Mark. John provides the controversial opinions. Yeah. And do you have any allergies? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Not that I know of. <laughs> um, in, fact, in fact, in terms of controversial opinions, Gary yeah. Lineker. John, have you got oh. any thoughts on that? Just while we... Yeah, I've got thoughts on it, yeah. Go on, give me 30 seconds. Um, well, I think, it, I think it's really mad that people aren't allowed to actually have an opinion, even if they've got it. Like, mm -hmm. I think in modern day society, what we do is try and shut down everyone's opinion um, unless it's perceived to be the right opinion. And I just think that's like, I find it strange that we, you know, like, it's naive by Gary Lineker to come out like that and expect no comeback. But that being said, like, everyone's got opinions. We should, we should actually encourage people to have an opinion. What if your contract says you can't have opinions? Do you, well, do you, but well, some other people have had, have had the same contract who had opinions, me? But, but it's been fine. Smaller fish like me. And I didn't, work, I didn't work at the weekend. I didn't get paid because of Gary. What's yeah. that, like, man of the people? I didn't get paid. Because oh. all the shows got cancelled. Thanks, Gary. What do you mean? Did, you problem. didn't get Well, Gary earns £1.3 million. Pounds. Mm. Ian Wright, Anna Shearer, well, and a lot of money. It's all about you then, isn't it? It's well, no, it's not all about me, but it's about cameramen, it's about producers, yeah, no, it's I about technical it, stuff. It's about, if, it if you're a man of the more people, than a week. no one's going to get paid this weekend because I've got an opinion about asylum seekers. No, but they, you should, they, well, they made it into such a big story. It's pathetic. It well, how's that a front page story? That's well, what we've come no, to. I know, but it shouldn't have been, should it? It should have been basically, Gary Lineker's got an opinion, and this is his opinion, and the BBC could speak to him privately about how he broadcasts his opinions. Mm. But at the end of the day, that should have been it. He's had opinions for the last 20 years on Twitter. No one's been bothered until now. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's wrong. Yeah. I think people should be allowed to say what they think. And there shouldn't be consequences or people trying to suppress opinion because what's that then? We're in like some sort of... Um, Don't say yeah. the same thing that Gary said no, because you'll get cancelled. No, but you are in a society that, that supports opinions as long as it's <clears throat> part of like the societal zeitgeist of what's popular at any one time, which is crazy. Do you think you could be cancelled one day? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, Mark, hopefully. Mark, John is the most likely to be cancelled in the rugby league world. No? I think you're most be... likely. I think Will's the most likely to be cancelled. You've got to be someone to be cancelled. No one knows who I am. one indiscretion you away from it <laughs> come tumbling down. You and know there's who a few in the cupboard. Isn't Closet, oh, skeletons. Yeah. They're yeah. in the cupboard. Anyway, in the forget Gary Lennon again. Forget yeah, Gary Lennon again. Thanks, Gary. I'm going to get paid at the weekend. Let's move on. Um, when I say to you, John Wilkin, Martin Gleeson, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Cheese. Easy. Cheese. Cheese. Was that, Cheese. Was that your name? I don't know. No, it's his nickname. It wasn't his nickname. It's just you calling me. I know, yeah. But no, but, but no long, I think it was long as Sean Long's kids couldn't say your name. So they used to call oh, you Cheese. Yeah. So well, couldn't, Cheese. They couldn't say Martin, so they said Cheese. Yeah, just instead of Gleese. No one like calls me Martin. Martin. Someone called me Martin a few weeks ago. I didn't know who they were I called you to. Martin just outside the pub a minute ago. Yeah, no, I ignored you. <laughs> Matt, Matt, so look, and we're going to get stuck into this, but obviously, Mark, you played with Martin a long time, mm -hmm. please. We, a long, long time ago. Was it mm -hmm. 2009? You had a, 2009, eight, yep. nine, ten games you played yep. as a little, yeah. You played with him at Saints. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously, you've been coached by him, Mark, as well. You've been in... Yeah. Coached by him as well. Different from dynamic. Was he different? Was he different 60, as a player as he was as a coach? Um, same person, probably. When, when you go from a player to a coach, you've, you've obviously got to change a little bit. Um, but we've always had a really good relationship, even... Back when I was a I was a young kid at Wigan, I was into indie music, so we used to bond over Kings of Leon and having a couple of pints after a game. So we always had a good relationship back then. Yeah, one of the best uh, best modern centres the games had. Yeah, um, physically probably not the quickest, and and what he did was quick enough. You no, know, but he learned the nuanced skill of playing centre 
that you probably don't have to do if you're a great athlete. And I think Martin understood it positionally the demands more than any other player that I've played with. Mm. And in terms of sometimes we were thinking about or chatting about this before is when you're a player, like there's certain players who, who do what they do and they have no idea why it works for them. And there's players who demand things of people around them because it helps them be good. And Martin was always, always one of those players, like the first player that I'd played with who understood, you know, where he caught the ball, what that meant to his body shape and how he moved, you know, how he used his footwork to manipulate defenders and, and creating players inside of him that got in the ball in a position which he liked. Like, that was something that stood out for me. I love, love that Gleese is just like, what looking at you like he's listening to the podcast and like he's not on it yeah no well, he's just on learned it. something <laughs> he's, 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 he's he taking all the compliments like this yeah. keep bringing what? it I think was that like that we, we're going to get stuck into your life Gleese and, and what you're doing right now um, shortly but we should say commiserations to, to John Wilkin who yeah. is he, not he was the sports a bit upset pundit of the year wasn't he yeah just to confirm not the sports pundit of the year um, where, where did you come out of the 16th did they do like reverse order in 16th me. John Wilkin. Yeah. The, up to Ali McCoy. I told you Ali McCoy would win it. Ali McMoist. Ali McMoist. Is that, can we say that? <laughs> Ali McMoist. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, he won it. Yeah, it was a good night. It was, uh, it was, it was good fun. Any networking? No. No. Did just Roy Keane too, turn up? Just too drank cool, too so cool much red it. wine. No, your teeth go a bit blue. Yeah. And you, 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 you got dry Kyle Amo was there. Yeah, it was, it was all right. It was good. It's one of those awards dues. You know, you go to awards dues, right? And the genuine, it's like everybody's there and there's a few people nominated. And then everybody celebrates that those people have won. Well, this was where everybody was nominated in the room. You know what I mean? Oh, it's not. And by the way, it's 95 quid a ticket. Ooh, <laughs> you didn't get a free ticket as a nominee? Well, BBC paid. Yeah, Roy Keane didn't turn up, no? Knew he wasn't going to win. I think he did, but it just, he was in disguise. <laughs> as, as Ali McCoy. As Ali McMoy. Did, did you have a speech prepared? I know we talked about this last time, but did you? Did no, no, not was, at all. I, I was under no illusions that I wasn't, <laughs> you know, that I was not going there to win, Will. I was going there to represent. Did you do your, the acceptance clap, like, oh, nod your head? Yeah, no, what I did. <laughs> he deserved on you it. He deserved it, yeah. Like the what, Oscars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I did was I went, is what every rugby league person does in every corporate situation that they ever go, is to over-represent a very un underrepresented minority in a room full of people who are infinitely better than you. And oh, took a match of the free And that's bar. what rugby league players do. We'll yeah. go to any do and turn yeah. it into a... Minority. Yeah, no, and it's like, oh, isn't the oh, rugby league's here? Well yeah. done. At least they turned up there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. thanks for coming, rugby league. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Maybe next year. Cute. Um, However, let me give you some good news. You could still win an award this year. Right, great. Okay, uh, because we have been nominated for the Rugby Sports Podcast of the Year. Is it by the same? Is it by the same? In the background? Is it by the same people? <laughs> no, we basically have to There's put yourself. There's 48 candidates <laughs> have been nominated this year. If you put yourself in, you're nominated. Right. Okay. That's so what you did, wasn't it? Cat Caterpillars and Moths by Darren and Steve from Norwich. Um, is, uh, the good news is James Haskell's podcast is not in it this year. Um, oh, I'm that's, not sure why. That's, that's great news. Well, because they just they've got they've got someone who's married to someone in the royal family. They always win. <gasps> no, it, that's good news for you because you like you know him and it's no, like, no, oh, we want to win it. He he normally wins it. That's oh, what I'm no, saying. Like, so he's not in it. I know, but you love. No, but he's not in it. That's you, my point. You're missing the point. No, but anyway, I'm not, you're you're, okay. you're not. I'm not missing the point. The point <laughs> is that you know James Haskell. Do I? <laughs> Yes. I didn't say that. You said that. No, but you right. like okay. to anyway, out on the there, are, there are 11 other podcasts in the category. You can vote for us at sportspodcastgroup.com. Nobody's going to do that. <laughs> are you going to remember that? Nobody's Sports gonna... Podcast if, group. If, com. if anybody actually puts that into the browser, I'm going to be, I'll be really surprised. <laughs> Isn't it? Just fucking vote for us, you idiots. Um, idiots. <laughs> Ooh. Anyway, Ooh. look... Um, Please, I'm not going to warn you one more time. Put that microphone up to your lips. Yeah. Mark, you're in control of his microphone at all times. There we go. Okay, yeah. um, before we before we get onto your story, bit of news to get us started. Lee Radford sacked. I know we don't we do we normally keep these timeless, don't we? But yeah. that came to me as a little bit of a surprise. Three games in, um, right or the wrong call. In fact, Martin, right or the wrong call because um, two of those defeats were against Wigan and Saints. That seems that seems quite excessive. That doesn't seem like a performance based. Sacking, right? No, to, to me, it looks something else has gone on there, or it was, in, it was on the cards from previous to that. I don't think them three games had a bearing on it. Um, I, I've obviously been out the game for a little bit, so I don't really know what's, what's mm. been going on. Give me the reason why uh, Lee Rafford's uh, been sacked. Lee Rafford's not been, he's not been sacked. He's, it, it, but he has. Part, mutual come, consent, he's been sacked. 
by mutual consent. No, he can't. Not he has been sacked. No, but you just said it's a legal thing. No, no, because it happens all the time. Mutual consent is so, not. Well, shut up, but let him answer the question. So, so and so has left the football club by mutual consent. Yeah, but that's fake because he's been sacked, and yeah. the, the coach doesn't want the disgrace of being sacked. Right. So they come to this conclusion so to leave, of mutual consent. No, this is Lee Radford's leaving at the end of the year anyway. Yeah. Results for Cass had won eight out of ten the last ten games. Yeah. They started the year absolutely like a bag of shit. And then basically Lee Radford has gone into a meeting, but then you have a conversation at board level and it's like, well, what do you want to do? Well, it, it, and it comes to a situation where, well, it's probably best if I step aside now, take all of my money up till October, November, and you give Andy Last an opportunity. That's what's happened, realistically. It's right. nothing more than that. It's not like, oh, we're getting rid of you. I'd imagine he's, all, he's come to negotiate a contract. He doesn't want to negotiate because he wants to leave. The club have decided to go another way very quickly. Yeah. Um, OK, let's park that one there. And one more bit of news, at least, which you can definitely come in on, is yeah. Sam Tompkins. Yeah. Mark, did you, sorry, did you have an opinion on no, Lee Radford? You had your chance, but you don't... Did you? No, I didn't get a word in as usual. But, no, but um, do you, before we move on to Sam Tompkins, anything else to say? No, I agree with John. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Tompkins, though, yeah, great player. Yeah, you've all played with or against him. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he's 33, he's a baby. I know he's had his injuries and so on, but that's um, one of the greatest of his generation. It's, it's a testament to his career that he's won Man of Steel twice within such a big um, uh, gap in terms of it was 2011, I think. 2011 yeah, and then 10. 2010, yeah, maybe yeah. 2010. And then a couple of years ago... He's been a great player. He probably revolutionised the way that fullback was played in this country. He's been a great ambassador for the game, and I think you can all see that he's been carrying injuries for the last couple of years, and mm. it's probably taken its toll now. But amazing player. How good was he, Gleese? Yeah, very good. I was at Wigan when he was a kid coming through. He wasn't a fullback to start with. He was a halfback. I think Amos Roberts got injured, and then he managed to put him at fullback, and just just the way he moved, glided, just kept his hips away from defenders. Just one of them guys, when he moves with the ball, you can just tell he's good. And, but on top of that, competitor as well. Real top-class competitor. Yeah. Do you think, do you think playing, good... playing half-back is, is a good development for somebody who goes into play full-back, Gleeson? I think so. Over the last 10 years, all, yeah. all barring maybe Tedesco is not that kind of full-back, is yeah. it? But all the top full-backs are half-backs, really, right, aren't right. they, as well? They're the, they're, full-back's a key position. They're the ones who are picking the sides and putting that killer pass on for how the game's gone over the last 10 years. Yeah. But, yeah, that certainly helped him. Yeah, yeah. He had a Being great rugby IQ. He understood the game really well, but then he had the instinctive qualities to react and see ov ov overloads and read numbers and, and, and take advantage of, you know, when, when he's got a couple of players outside him. Uh, and the fact he was a competitor, I don't think it was more a more competitive player on the field than him last probably 10, 12 and, and years. I think that one, one of the big things you can say about Sam Will is when he was young, he was defined by how quick he was, how agile he was, yeah. you know, how, how fast he moved over the ground. And that made him really tricky to play against. Now, you couldn't say that about him for the last four or five years, realistically. He's had a lot of lower limits. So you've seen that deterioration, yeah? But, oh, yeah, absolutely. But I just thought he, he became such a smart player in the last four or five years that he, he, he sort of evolved. Yeah, and just look what, like, since him and Mickey went to Catalans, they've been a different beast. Yeah. They were so inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. They were all over the shop. He's brought that mentality they had at Wigan over to Catalans, and, like, they're pushing right up there now, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So I think he's, he's, got, he's got a massive factor in what Catalans have done over the last few yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah and, he, and as well, like, people, like, for us, like, Catalan was a holiday... No, it's not a holiday, but it was one of them clubs that it would recruit badly mm. and you'd look at it and you wouldn't take it seriously because, you know, you sign somebody like Dave Taylor, right? And Willie Mason. And Willie and Mason. Todd and you just become a joke to mm. everybody watching. It's like people who go out there and think, you know what, I go to Catalan, why? Because I can go to Barcelona three times a week. I can ride scooters around the south of France. And I reckon Sam and Mickey, the first two who've gone over there with any fucking steel about them mm. to create a fucking winning mindset. And that's what, and that, that for me, signalled a change in, in, in Catalan. And you're he, he right, Glee, yeah. so right, is yeah. Sam and Mickey Mack. So Steve taking them there made, made them people think seriously, You just right? change, your, your culture can change and hinge on they a few people. They just won't accept it. They won't accept the looseness in training. They're not giving it 100%. They just won't, I remember I was, I might have still been playing, or I was coaching. I think at Salford we battered them yeah. by six. Sam yeah, had one just gone. Yeah. yeah, I think I was the star of the show. Actually. And like Sam yeah. was fuming after, and he said, oh, and he's just the way he reacted. Obviously, as you would, but 
he was just going on about how the, the way they train. It was and, 2019. And the, uh, what was it? And yeah. the, the laxing attitude they have over there, and he's just like, this has got to change. Yeah. And he either played a big part in that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's get stuck into Martin Gleeson. That's what she Here's said. a question for you, Gleeson, right? What do we need to understand about the young little Martin Gleeson before he moved to Australia to, to get him today? What do you need to know? Yeah. Because you were born in Wigan, right? Yeah. And then, why, why, why did the folks take you to Oz? Um, uh, so, talking 1989, 1990, my dad was a builder. I don't think there was any work at that time. I think it was uh, recession time, that kind of. Um, so, my nan and granddad have always run pubs in Wigan. So, they had a pub, and I think one of the locals at the pub moved over to Brisbane, who was a joiner. Said there was loads of work. That's fun for you, that will call. Yeah, yeah. Miss saying you've got to be home. Sorry, Glitch. Stop, 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 stop that emotional part. Do you want to take it? My sister. It's take my it, take it. <laughs> my, <laughs> sister. <laughs> my sister on his phone. Do you want to take it? <laughs> no, she's no. no. Sure. She's Send it to voicemail. Probably drunk. Yeah. Sorry, Glitch. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, where was that? So, yeah, so I think <laughs> someone at the lo- <laughs> I mean, Dan's pub went over there who was a builder. Work got back. There's loads of work out there in Brisbane. Um, so my dad just said, right, let's, let's pack up and, and go. So we just went out there, so I was nine, ten-ish. And then, Did you uh, want to go? Was that disruptive as a kid? You know, you had your mates, you had your school friends? And... I can't remember. It was only nine, ten, you just go, don't you? I was yeah. looking for, I remember being excited about it. Um, headed off over there, and no, it was great. I'd come back when I was 17, so I had a good chunk of my school and rugby, rugby learning over there. Yeah. Did you, did you end up with a sort of weird Sam Burgess accent at some point. We had Sam on the podcast. Do you remember when he had with Sam when he sort of came in? He's like, got a weird accent. Weird. I mean, that's funny. Yeah. Very weird, it changes yeah. with, the, with his location. I think if you spend... Jammer's a bit weird as jammer, well, isn't jammer's, it? Jammer's gone more... Yeah, jammer's weird. There's, I think what happens is when you go to Australia, you end up somewhere in the middle of, like, it's almost like mid-Atlantic accent. In the sea. Like, <laughs> part, yeah, no, it's not, away. Yeah, no, it's like, you know, like, <laughs> actors who go live in, in LA and they end up sounding weird, don't yeah. they? Well, that's what happens to rugby players who go live in Australia. Yeah, but it's the same, it's same when they go to rugby union. It's not, yeah. because they can't understand you. You have to repeat yourself about ten mm. times. <laughs> so they soften it up a bit. Like, yeah. look at Chris Ashton. Grab up steak, yeah. Ashy's the poshy sounding fellow. Even though. Jason Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, they all sound yeah, different. Yeah. So you have that at Penny Hill Park Fa- when you ordered well, a Guinness? Faz, you know? is, still Faz pretty, is proper Wigan. He's, yeah, he's, I love yeah. that. But his dad, when well, you listen to his dad do interviews. Is he gone a bit? Yeah, he's now got an Irish twinge, hasn't he? Just, they just soften sure. it a little you bit. Have to, so you have to soften yourself just, a little bit. Just, just so a little people bit. can understand you. Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, some, most yeah. do. And it's the same in Australia. But yeah, when I got back from Australia, I had a little bit of an Aussie twang. I was in Wigan for about a week and it went... When I got back. <laughs> Were you just playing long. rugby all the time over there? Yeah, all the time. I think under 10s to under 17s. I think as a young kid playing rugby, rugby league in Australia, it's just firm ground all yeah. year round. It's just you're playing touch rugby, you're yeah. playing rugby league, rugby union probably. No, no rugby union <clears> in Brisbane. Wasn't it? No. But you played, league, you league, played league. a bit of league here because everyone we've had from where you grew up all went to St. Pat's and all had the same sort of background yeah but had you played any serious kids rugby here before well, you went under to eight, under nine. No, but people, you, start early, you start early don't you uh, all St James's so I played in the same team as Ian Sibbett Dave Iton Chris and Phil Farrell who uh, are yeah. uh, played at Alden Andy's younger yeah. brothers mm-hmm. Neil Roden remember when we played at Alden yeah, yeah. Martin Roden. Played. played with Wellow for a year as well Did under you? tens or somewhere yeah. Wellow came over and played Did you? Rug. Uh, he didn't mention that when we had no, him on. No, no. <laughs> he didn't forget. Through, through, wasn't it? <laughs> um, so how much did it change your development then when you went to Australia? Oh, and and, and how, so I, I know I'd say how serious because you're 10 years old, but w- was that a thing? Was that in your mind thinking, I want to play rugby at that age? Uh, no. Just fun, just yeah, being a kid. Yeah, just fun. But just one thing, the, the difference, Flash like said, it's you playing in shit, mud over here, and you go yeah. over there, Brisbane, it's, you, don't see, you don't see a piece of mud. It's just yeah. pure grass and you're on top of the ground. Mm. And so it, good for your skill development, must yeah. be. Yeah, it is. And uh, I came back when I was about 13, 14, for about six months. Mm-hmm. We had like a long holiday back over here, and I went back playing and just remember being, f- I just remember everyone being massive over here and just fucking running in shit. Yeah. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? It's just like, hands were freezing. Fucking yeah. Couldn't catch a ball, getting tackled in puddles of ice. Junior like, this rugby is league's grim, in it, in this country? Yeah. Oh. yeah. It's grim. Yeah. It's great. It's like a mental toughness. Mm. It's like we will siphon out all of the weak people and we'll just leave these really weird people left. 
who yeah. like pain, who yeah. like love things being a bit <laughs> rank. Who love the who, dad's who, shouting oh, out. Saying, enjoy, Toughen up. Enjoy it being rank and just live in uncomfortableness and awkwardness. And like, that's what, that's what rugby league's like a filter. And when you get to the top of it, you're left with the weirdest group of people you'll ever find. Well, I couldn't understand when I first got back from Oz, and this is like, I got back from Oz in, after about a year and a half, I'd signed for Huddersfield. So the difference between the amateur over here playing in the shit and the more than the, mm. that was in winter, and then I was going professional and you're training in decent at Huddersfield, Mal Riley was a coach, decent growings, everything. So you're playing one thing growing up as a kid, yeah. And then you're playing something completely different yeah. as a professional. It's not recognisable. It's not the same. No, no, no. It changes. <laughs> yeah, it's so fucking mental. You came back here when you were 17, right? Yeah. And, but, but was there ever a chance of you thinking, I'm going to go through the academy, through the roots, the young roots in an NRL side? Well, I was playing a very good side on the 17s. Who did you play for? Um, I started off a club called Beanley, then Slacks Creek. And then I finished up at Logan Brothers. Cameron yeah, Smith was yeah, they're the, the feeder club for Melbourne, aren't they? Yeah, so the Cameron Smith was a couple of years younger than me. I played. Brad Myers played in my team. Remember, oh, he came yeah. over and played at Bradford. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Him, so we was. I finished. It was uh, President's fellow flag. Ginger. Half yeah, fellow yeah. Halfway through <laughs> the season, uh, we were top. We were be, be, best team in Brisbane. So I was playing yeah. on a really good side, and the coach wanted me to stay over there. But I was at that age, seventeen. Yeah. Were you were you sent to that? Uh, six. Were you? Yeah. Who couldn't kick and still can't. <laughs> <laughs> there's, so, there's so many things I want to focus on. I think particularly, you know, obviously you going into union and, and mm. some of the things that cropped up across, across your career. But you're, in your playing days, you, you played for six clubs, like big clubs. Yeah. You moved, you, it seems someone yeah. on the outside, you moved around quite a bit, yeah. quite a lot. Yeah, towards the back end, like towards the back end I did. Uh, yeah. I was at Huddersfield for a start, went for a trial game there. Because when I got back from Australia, I'd missed the ball kind mm. of thing. So everyone my age signed up for all the academies at 16. Mm -hmm. So I missed missed the jump on all the academies. So all them guys I spoke about before, they were all playing for Wigan Academy, Warrington Academy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I was playing at St. Pat's under 18s. You had you could do there was no under 17s, so there was two years. So I did a uh, half a year under 18s, and I started the second year of under 18s. Mm. So I kind of missed the ball, and then I got a trial match at uh, remember Nigel Wright? Yeah, yeah. He got me a trial gig at Huddersfield. Yeah, yeah. So I went for uh, a trial match in their academy against yeah. Cass, played really well and then got a contract. And then about three, four weeks later, I was making my debut against Bradford. Oh, yeah, yeah. mad. Back yeah. quick. So I didn't even do a pre-season with Huddersfield. It was like May, June or something like that. Just straight I'd, in. Straight in. Nigel Wright, Nigel Wright was some player, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Wigan player. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember him. He texted me a few weeks ago, actually. <laughs> Nigel Wright. Shout out Nigel Wright. I must text him back. Yeah. <laughs> Reminder. <laughs> Uh, as we said at the top, won two grand finals, won the Challenge Cup. Yeah. Is that, that day in 2010 against John Wilkin and against St Helens, is that the standout? When you um, look back at that career? That was good. Yeah, that was Did you good. you play in 2005 against Australia? Uh, when you beat them in Sydney? No, I was on the tour, I didn't play that yeah, game. Right. Uh, beat Aussies at Wigan in 2003 or four, maybe. Four. Four. Definitely. Yeah, beat him at Wigan and pissed him Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then we lost the final, didn't we? Yeah. Ellen Rowe. Ellen Rowe got Rowe, battered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was good. Two tries, Old Trafford. Yeah, that was good. Uh, Saints one was probably better. I don't know. There was something about that Saints being at Saints 2002. early 2000s. Yeah. You were there, right, as a baby? Yeah, yeah starting off. It was, that was, they, they were really good times then. What are your memories of those days? Uh, just like, same as Will Cole, it's just that the, the the club team spirit that they had then, really good players and everyone everyone go back was at the Griffin after the yeah, game, yeah, yeah. but like everybody, the full team and everyone just got on really well, trained really hard. Kieran Cunningham and all them set the standards. Scully, just really good players. Everyone got on. It was just like they were good days then. It was good crack, wasn't it? Yeah, good crack. Really good crack. Yeah. How that, different was Martin to other teammates you had back then? No, I mean we're all probably pretty similar in, in, in a lot of ways. Like we, 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 we played hard, we trained hard and we partied pretty hard, you know? Yeah. That's what we did, you know? Well, you, you, you win, you celebrate like <coughs> man. Uh, you, you lose, you turn up sulk on a Monday, get after it. Like, um, it was a tough, like it was an, an amazing environment for me. I was young, younger mm. than Martin at that stage. Walked into- Are you the older now? 
I'm older than you now, yeah. It's yeah. weird. Time stopped. Time. Him and gone him. No, he did, he did. He, yeah, he went down under. And yeah, yeah. It's a time difference. Yes. Yeah. And then he kept doing it, and eventually I called him up. Yeah, uh, yeah just a mad time. Like, amazing. A, a great team. And then probably my memory of that, that era was the 2004 Challenge Cup final at, yeah. at, at, against Cardiff. Rio and Cardiff, which was... It was just massive, you know. It felt massive yeah. uh, for me. Wigan know. Derby. Yeah. 2002 yeah. was a big one as well, but they beat us. We were like massive favourites going into that game. Yeah. Blue leads away, I think. Um, cracking it. Like, there's some really good good teams back then. Bradford, they good with Bradford back then. Yeah, yeah. Like, Do you find were... your confidence in that? Like, because you, you're at Huddersfield, right? Uh, you know, when you start a career in sport, like, you start going and you get a bit of confidence. But was Saints sort of coming and signing you at that stage? Is that where you got your confidence, do you think, at uh, that point? No, I, don't, I, I wouldn't say so. No. I thought I was playing pretty good at Huddersfield. It was, yeah. It's just different. Yeah, yeah. It's just different. And then you go to... You go but it to accelerated your career that little Yeah, that of course spell, it does. It? Yeah. Of course it does. It's yeah. hard. Like, Huddersfield finished bottom two years in a row yeah, when yeah. I was there. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And then you go to a team like Saints and the players they've got and... You're winning every week and you're adding bits to your game and yeah, good days. Mm. Um, I want to spend a large chunk of this talking about what, what you're so passionate about now, Gleese, and your coaching <laughs> and what you've been doing with Eddie Jones in England and obviously what the future holds for you. Do you mind talking about some of the controversies? Not that I want to focus too much on them, but as I said, no, John, but I'm going to just, just test the waters a little bit here. Um, look, I mean, it's not, it's not news to anyone. Everyone knows these stories, but I just want to tap into a few of them. So you were involved in a, in a betting scandal with, with Sean Long, your good mate, in, in 2004. Um, and John, you were obviously at Saints at the time as well. Mm -hmm. you, you got a four-month ban. I mean, that's, that, today, that seems like a long ban, doesn't it, for, for essentially what was, was one bet. And, and tell, me if, tell me if I'm wrong, but it was a bet that you won 900 quid on and you got a 10 grand fine. So yeah. 9,100 down. 9,100 yeah. down, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty insane. And, uh, and it wasn't, yeah, everyone was doing it, right? You, you got yeah, caught. It was, it, right, so what happened was, I can't remember the exact details, but I think we was in the semi-final or of the Challenge Cup the week after. And we'd, it, was, uh, it was like an Eastern Friday, Monday game, that kind of thing. And mm. I think we beat Wigan on the Friday. And then Basil came in and said... Uh, That's Ian Millward, isn't it? Yeah, Ian Millward. So, because we won, he'd knock off these chunks of games, so we only have to win so many games, and yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? If you lose that many, you're still going to be kind of all right. So he came in and said, right, I'm not going to, like he used to, and he'd come in red-eyed, he'd been on the piss all weekend with Chris yeah, Moyes, uh, David Moyes is yeah, in yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, He used to always be on the piss at the weekend, Moisey. he'd come in Monday morning, Moisey. Eyes, he'd be like, Moisey, oh, <laughs> Moisey you know, goes Moisey. to see hey, on the weekend. I woke up in my flat, Johnny <laughs> Vegas's trousers were at the bottom of the stairs, Johnny Vegas wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, that's what it was like, Monday mornings. Yeah. Everyone wasn't bothered about the video, everyone just wanted to listen to Basil's story. Yeah. <laughs> But that, that, so that stage, he, he said, all right, we're fielding a week. He said, yeah. we, he's like fielding the reserves, which included me. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> he, he, he sort of let that be sort of well known to the guys. And at that, that stage, that was probably where the against, issue... Against Bradford, who against were like Bradford. Against superstars Bradford, at the time. At Bradford, who was massive. I broke my thumb um, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. I had to, and I were, you, out, were you starting? Yeah, so yeah. I broke my thumb and then that, I didn't play in the Wigan game. I think that was that the one was a big fight. Yeah, might yeah. have been that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, was that the fight? Is that that game? Yeah. You should. So, no, that's the Friday, oh, that's the good Friday the, the, game. The, 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 yeah, yeah. I broke my thumb a few weeks before in the previous round of the Challenge Cup. And then, so then I, I had to play in that Bradford game. Um, but yeah, so Basil comes in and says, no one's playing. Couple, I was the only one who played who was a regular, yeah, I think, yeah. at that time. And he basically was saying, it's only six in the book, he's all four starters, something like that. Everyone's like that. <laughs> To each other, yeah. Like yeah, listening. Yeah. So other people were on it as well, right? Yeah. Obviously. But why did you get caught and no one else? Because we're stupid. <laughs> yes. We were stupid. Yes. Because everyone's <laughs> everyone's going around and getting driving around with a loads of cash and yeah. me and Longy end up opening an account with Stan James. Longy went to Cindy Cindy Bolter. It's all right, they won't know who we are. <laughs> so it was like Bradford minus four or something like we we're, we we're gonna get beat by four. And, and and Gleese, the rules back then, right? And obviously the same I mean today. Um, and I mean, I'm so you look use at like your own name in the account. Yeah, that's so stupid. But so, so just, so just, that sounds so really stupid, doesn't it? Yeah. When you, I don't know when you say it out loud. Yeah, it's stupid. Very but for stupid. people listening right now, like, 
today players can't bet on any competitive rugby league, any no. professional rugby no. league. And it was the same back then, yeah? Yeah, but it ever, wasn't. Ever, it wasn't scrutinised no, back then. Ever, I'd ever. Say they used to do the coupon, didn't you? Where yeah. six games, and I think people would casually do that at lower level. What you didn't have to do back then, and I think this came out after it, is you didn't have to say what your twenty-one man squad is or whatever it mm. is, your your nineteen man squad. That didn't have to come out. So you'd look up to the game, and no one. Because I remember there was a couple of famous commentators who were asking, and I think if they were on it, they looked on. <laughs> uh, as we, were getting, up, as we were getting on the bus, one, some... of, one of them, is this right the team and boom, on the phone? Oh, yeah. So, listen, there was, uh, a few on it. There was a few. Did, did, did you, did you play, John? I did, yeah. How, I how did you play? I, I got sent off after six so, minutes. So, <laughs> so, so you were in on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, you got sent off after six minutes. Yeah, yeah. High tackle. Yeah. That sounds so suspect. So were you it investigated? Does, were you I scored the first try. I know Glee scored the first try. He's doing everything. Why didn't you, why didn't you run so off the pitch? Because you don't, you know, <laughs> you don't try and lose. No, no it wasn't. You're still tired, you bet. Hold on, if John Wilkins set off after, what, six minutes? I reckon you had more I, 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 You must have been investigated. No, yeah, I was, but I had no idea at this stage that... I was naive at that oh, stage. I had yeah. no idea people were. all naive. No, no, honestly. Can we reopen the honestly, case? <laughs> honestly. <laughs> honestly. John Wilkin was stage, naive. I, well, I didn't know everyone was betting on it, for sure. Oh, it was my... <laughs> I, no, I'm, I'm genuine. I was Look just excited the to be just... playing. I didn't know everybody was betting on the game. If I had, you, what you're you asking me... a bunch of 12-year-olds. Did I get didn't... sent off on purpose, Will, to influence the result That's of the That's what I'm asking game. you. Yeah, you're on it. And they ask the question that you're asking is a good question, <laughs> and the answer is plead the fifth. No, will no more questions. You're no, on that. <laughs> but it was at the time, you know, when it all came out, and yeah. obviously this was it was a big story. Yeah, and, okay, and, and, it, it was a big and story. It was the first story actually where defrauding the bookmakers is a phrase that mm. you know you wouldn't even like. What does that mean? Like, <laughs> which, which bookies even was it? Stan Stan James. <laughs> yeah. Did he go in just, or just did one, he online? Just online. Just, it was online. Yeah. yeah. Was what online. did Long because go around I to think bookies? by the time we went to put some on, everyone had already been and they stopped taking bets. Right. So that was the only place to take bets anymore. Because <laughs> yeah. they were based in Gibraltar yeah. and they wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> but they, I mean, that would have cost. That the issue is obviously that event would have cost the bookmakers an amount of money. Mm. And that would have raised the eyebrows. Well, apparently, right? apparently, what we got told was someone recognised the names, and the actual it was your email. The actual <laughs> company didn't want to do anything, but this individual told the story to the papers. And one of the best pictures of all time that you will ever see, which is really sad, because is Sean Long getting door stopped by the Daily Mail. <laughs> Like, if anybody can... <laughs> it's not good. It's it funny. Is good. It is, it, if you've ever seen a man open a door and go, oh, shit, <laughs> it's that picture. The picture is genius. Yeah. It was just... Yeah, long, one flowing of, blonde locks. Well, yeah, and he's just like... If he, if he could have been saying, oh, shit, he would have... <laughs> <laughs> the best is what he said. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> went, have you had a belt the game? It's more like that. And he went, uh, oh, what did he, oh, what did he say? Is it, they said, put it on for me. He said, no, what? Yeah. No, but my brother did. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been playing on that game? Said, no, but my, my brother did. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually illegal as well. <laughs> but your brother's, so you, no, no, brother's, brother's brother. sister's brother no, bro, isn't. Actually, it, this is where it does get interesting. Is like As a player, mm. it's technically privileged information that you've got, and you can't <laughs> give that to family members and friends, technically. Yeah, no, actually, you know, it, all, it all changed then. Yeah, she had yeah. to put it... Now it's gone like, you know what I mean, really. Yeah. It was a harsh lesson yeah. for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, actually, yeah, that you yeah. and you no. and Sean, that was a big, yeah, it was yeah. a massive story, wasn't it? But did you yeah. feel like you, you'd taken a hit because you got the four-month ban? As yeah. in, like, you know, other people well, had listen, done it. I've... Did you feel a bit of a pile on it? Like people were coming for you? Yeah, but yeah, it's, you just had to take it. There's nothing yeah. you can do. You you messed up. It wasn't a, a malicious or intent. No, no. It were like you were trying to, do it in a bad way. It was just one of them. Oh, we can get one over on this year. This is yeah. an academy team versus Bradford at the time. You just, it was inevitable. Yeah. What about all the other bets that you got away with? Never had another bet. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no further no comment. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I mean, like, it, it is actually quite topical, even in the sense that, you know, in the Premier League, you've got Ivan Tony betting on it. It's amazing, really, that. Premier League stars think they can get away with it and bet with their own accounts in but, this day yeah. and age. And, and there's a lot, of, there's different things in the, between. They might be betting on like you can't even bet on another game. Yeah, you know no, what he, I mean? he was betting on his own well, games as well. Yeah. Was it? Which yeah. is completely different. Yeah. Yeah. You bet on your own and team it wasn't, to win. It wasn't. You're not allowed to. No, yeah. but this wasn't match 
the the accusation was it's sort of match fixing or betting on your team to mm. underperform in a game. It wasn't. But it, it could be was, twisted like that, can't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. But this was this was betting on the inevitability of a result that we knew was coming because yeah. we got slapped by by Bradford mm. quite clearly. We, the national press love. Um, shaming rugby league in any way they can. Oh, they love shaming people, don't yeah, they? Yeah, but if there's yeah. a rugby league story in the, on the front page, well, that, it's, it's always a negative so, one, isn't so it? So, 2004 Challenge Cup. Yeah, I remember. So you said Daily Mail was knocking on Longy's door. Yeah, and then I remember us winning the Challenge Cup, coming back. We stopped off at a pub somewhere on the way back. Yeah, the day after, and the Daily Mail was there, opened it up, and there was not one bit on the Challenge Cup final. No, no, mm. nothing. No. And then Gleese went, a scandal, it's Gleese went straight well, to then, the racing pages. But, but then two, pages two and three was <laughs> the other time was me yeah. Are you allowed to bet on them when, you, when you're banned? Oh, no, During maybe. the four month ban, could you put some bets on? Uh, I don't know. I was, what, I don't in all seriousness, what, what, what were those four months like for you? Um, it's a long time ago. It was um, a long, it's a long time to be off. Well, we it? went to shit, didn't we? Yeah. On the field. Yeah. We went to shit. Partly because of that? Oh, definitely. Like Sean and Martin at the time were our best players. We. I remember me and, Long, it me and Longy year. and uh, yeah, because we after it we ended up playing a few games and we played that final. Then yeah. we got banned after that. Yeah, yeah, didn't we? And we the finished, last game was against Warrington. Yeah, we finished like second bottom after these two got banned. If you'd have worked yeah. the table out from that point, yeah. so we were top. Second bottom. We we're unbeaten. We we're unbeaten until yeah, Cardiff, till, uh, the Challenge Cup final. Till Gleese ruined and it. And then we yeah, till Martin yeah. ruined it Sorry. for everyone. Um, yeah, so no, I just that four. I think we went, we went away. We went to. A few of my mates, we went away for a week. We long, I think we went down to Newquay. That was a mad week. And then uh, then just got back into training. Just got massive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got massive. Got in the gym. Um, look, I, I, I'm not going to dwell on this at all, but, um, but I think asking you that and people listening will be like, well, hold on, there was another controversy everyone knows about and the band substance. And mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't want to go too much into it. But again, it was involving Sean Long and it was a long time after this, 2011. Um, again, that was a, it was a massive band for you. Least, wasn't it? Yeah, it, that it was, was, that it was, was three years and half of it suspended. I mean, that, that's not yeah. as trivial as what the betting issue was, was yeah, it? No, that was soul destroying. That one, that mm. was awful. Like so the other one was, I could, I could, I could take the other one because that that was like said it was just there was no, there wasn't any. Uh, it was just a stupid mistake. But this one really hurt me. I yeah. think because why? Why did that? Why did the? the because it, it was just completely took me by. Out of the blue, so, yeah. Whereas you, you almost understood the betting thing was wrong a bit, yeah. And it, it yeah, didn't and this just fully, you. fully sad to me because um, it was just like a Garan and all, all the lads at LFC. Well, there's a good chunk of them were taking. It was already there when I got the final mm. in the changing rooms. You know, just like a. So for context, this was a supplement that was given to the players before training, before matches, to kind of stimulate me before the game, which is quite commonplace in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. dressing rooms. But and given I, so by I, physios I, and. And yeah. strength and conditioning guys. I yeah. read up about this stuff. Um, this Oxy Elite Pro, which has got this, you know, controlled stimulant in called MHA, which essentially is like a caffeine buzz, right? Yeah. So there's no performance enhancing no. side to it. No. Everyone was taking it, and I, I'm just, not I'm just everyone, trying, but not everyone, but you know, a lot of people yeah. were in terms of just it was it was to control fatigue, right? And Sean Long had given it to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, no, he'd not given it to me as such. It was just it was there in the changing well, room. Some I've, people get it. Oh yeah, I've he, he was, he's, he's done an interview years ago. Yeah. And said that he gave it. You know, that's yeah. that's not a secret. Yeah. He, he said that he gave it to you and he'd yeah. given it to other people to help with fatigue and so on. I'm just building a bit of a theme in terms of like <laughs> you've been made a bit of a scapegoat when other people have got away with things in the past. You know, and, you, just, and you took the, but you took a big punishment for that. Yeah, I did, um, but. And that was endorsed by the club, though, wasn't it? In terms of the well, no, the guy who was S and C checked it out. So when mm. Longy's gone in with it, said make sure they're all right. He's he's gone to the computer, checked them out. But there's two things that you look for: mm. become an expert on antidoping. That's a fucking yeah, yeah. Well, you should be. Yeah. And then so there's an in competition testing, and there's an out of competition list. So there's mm. two different lists. Yeah. So whether you uh, get tested on a training day or you get tested on a match day, now you could have something in your system on a a training day. And it's completely okay, but then on a match day, it's not. Yeah. So once it's in and once it's in and out, I think the fellow who looked it up looked at the wrong one, presuming that if you look at that one, it covers that one as well. Yeah. And it was, so he's cleared it. It's, but if he looked on the other list, it was banned. Now, a few people were taking this prior to me coming there. Mm -hmm. And a few of them did get tested, but got tested on a training day. So it never come back as a positive result. Now I yeah. got tested after a game. 
And that's why... Was it, was it actually still... worth the risk in terms of the benefits that it gave you? No, not at all. No. Not one bit. It was just a fatigue controller? No, it's just like, you'll go to any, you'll go to any uh, club now and there's, there'll be a station or a thingy with different bits and bobs on you can pick out yeah. and have and just something might be like caffeine gum or... Mm. It's like pre-workout. Uh, pre-workout or it, whatever. It, it's a lesson that though, isn't it? Because the, the anti-doping, I don't think players know this is it strict liability is that put in your body whatever's in you is your responsibility yeah. now the tricky thing comes when you're at clubs and we went through something similar at st ellen's where yeah. we had mick sutherland who was a nutritionist yeah. who's given us well there's another story about that completely, yeah isn't of there? course yeah and he's given us supplements like i'm young I, I can't question this guy who says he's working with team gb he's giving you tablets and powders and drinks and and all of that it's an abuse of of almost trust really and in these situations, it really is for athletes to take control of it themselves and just go, look, nah, if, if you're in any doubt, and Martin's, mm. Martin's story is tragic, but yeah. if you're in any doubt, just don't. Even if somebody's saying, here's these, you've got to take these, don't. It, it is so topical in sport and not in just rugby league, you see it in athletics so much. And that debate of ultimately, you guys as sports people mm. are responsible for what goes in your mouth and what goes through your system. but. That there there's a, a team there's of a, people who yeah. support you. And there's a, a breach of trust along like, the line, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And, and there's also like a, an assumed trust from other people who you trust who are doing, you know, taking things and, and whatnot. But, but As a kid, that, Mark, at Wigan, you would have taken anything someone yeah, told after, you, wouldn't after, you? After every you're training in session moment. in the gym, we'd have um, a protein shake made up for us already. So, and I'd just drink it and you, you don't know what's been put in it. Yeah. You don't know the supplements have been used. You don't know how rigorously they've been tested. And it's like, it's like trust, you trust your coaches yeah. and your, your conditioners, but if they've not done the due diligence and yeah. done the research on what you're taking... Or made a mistake. Or made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. They're not at fault, I'm at fault. And it, that can be, that can make and break someone's career, though. Yeah. I mean, you, you said, I think, I find it really interesting, the, bet, the betting thing was fine, it sort of washed over you in time, but this one hit you hard. Like, what, what did that feel like, Glees? Because you, you, you know, it's 2011. You're like well into your career at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. How did that feel? You know, yeah, tough. It was hard. It's just, uh, just because of the nature of it. Like UK mm. anti-doping. Do you know what I mean? It was just, it was kind of that. The like, stigma attached yeah, to kind yeah. of it just, cheating or it like, just, yeah. Just because it just wasn't that. Do you know what mm. I mean? It wasn't that at all. And uh, yeah, that that was pretty dark. Mm. It, it, it seems crazy that you can, you know, players can go out and take cocaine, right? And which is a yeah. mistake because they know what they're doing, right? It's not recreationally, it's, it's, it's not, um, performance it's not in, sorry, it is recreational. It's not performance enhancing, but then they won't get anywhere near the, the length of punishment that you got for something yeah. that, that clearly was. That, that was, a, you know, half of it suspended. Mm. But actually, the sort of when, you were, when, when that was handed down to you as a punishment, you must have been blown away by how much rugby you were going to miss in the latter stages of your career. Uh, yeah, I probably didn't think of it like that then. It was like, it was just a blur, to be honest, now looking back. That mm. first little bit was a blur. I, d I don't even want to bring up any of the bad things, but what Wilco asked, and, and you know, anyone will know this who knows you, is that it did send you into a sort of spiral of depression. It was it was it was a tough yeah. Yeah, it was tough period yeah. of your life, wasn't it? It was tough, yeah. What how how, how did you and I know, I know the great thing is that you've come to the other side of it and actually, you know, that that sort of spurred you on, didn't it? For a decade, yeah. you've said that that yeah. took you onto a new stage in your career. But yeah. but you know, did you sort of learn, learn who who you could trust and knew who your friends were? It was a big pivotal moment in your life. Uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit, but just I think you just got to get yourself out of that cycle I think the big thing for me is like I was saying before is I just hit I hit the training really hard mm. like that got me out and giving myself a focus what I needed to do and I got the fittest I've ever been in my life um, just had that goal uh, like I was saying to flash before I've got I've been off for about six weeks now obviously and just for me to keep my head right and thing I just uh, hit the gym mm. do things like that and so you've got an addicti addictive personality in terms of if you set your mind to something whether that's coaching yeah. training whatever you, learning guitar music you're like yeah. all in a million percent aren't you yeah and I think if something gets obviously a takeaway so I'm not in rugby at this current period of time I've to replace that with someone and I've not I've not really trained properly over the last couple of years because the job especially with Eddie in England's pretty all consuming so my training dipped off a little bit because you've got to give your full attention to that so in this little bit of period now where I'm contemplating, I've hit the gym. A lot, of, a lot of deadlifts. A lot of deadlifts. 
Is that um, is that common? Do you, do you have addictive personality? Is that something, have you ever been diagnosed no, with that? Or something that you just no. you just accept? No, you you know, well I don't accept it because I don't know it. I'm, yeah, I, I don't mean addictive personality, but you you kind of when you're into something, you yeah, can, you I, commit I, fully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So committed. Yeah, committed. Yeah. I think it's a really important conversation though. Look, I don't know how much you want to talk about. It. If you don't, we'll move on. But uh, you know, things I'd read about you is that you, you didn't leave the house, you didn't open your post, you didn't answer your phone. You know, uh, for for loads of people who will be listening to this, Gleese, who've been in those situations, to, just what was that like? And you know, what was day to day life like? like um, is, it, is it just a blur to you when you think back? Uh, you know, you're making me think. Aren't I? Yeah, it was tough. Yeah, it was exactly like you just said. Um, didn't want to speak to anyone. Didn't want to. Uh, do much. Um, yeah, just had to snap out of it, and then found that solace and that focus with getting back with a. You need an aim. I didn't see a. Uh, I didn't mm. see anything to aim for, mm. and that's when you can spiral down. Once you've got something, you can you can aim for and aim towards and strive for. I think that then it then it. I think that's for anyone in any circumstance. Do you know what I mean? Any walk of life, I think you need a purpose, you need a name, you need, you need something to strive for. And if you don't have that, you're aimless and you're lost and you're, you're bewildered and you've got no positive outlook. Mm, yeah. It'd be almost like being in, you know, being in like a completely blacked out cave and then you see a bit beam of sunlight and like all of a sudden then you've got something to go at, you know, a reason to like try and get out, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think people sometimes just get lost in that, the darkness, don't they? That's the thing, we, you know, I'd assume that if you've got the right people around you've still got your mates, you've got your missus, you've got your parents, whatever, then things are gonna be okay. <laughs> That's from someone on the outside. It's very different on- Well, everyone's different individually, aren't they? Yeah. So everyone deals with yeah. things differently. Um, but I think, and it depends what time frame you're looking at over as well. You mm. know what I mean? Some people might be a week, some people might be six months. But the big, the big thing I think is, you see it even in the game. Like mm. once people, a team can be really good. As soon as they know they can't make that playoffs, then they drop off because mm. they've got nothing to aim for. They've got yeah, nothing yeah. to go no for. Reason, the competition yeah. comes down, and then then he goes to shit, and they start getting beat by fifty. And as long as you're still in with the hunt, and you've got something yeah. to aim for. You're striving, and you're. You're on the path of good. How long did that darkest period last? Um, I really can't remember. No. And then, so, so and what was your aim? What was your North Star, as it were, at that stage? Just to get back and play again. Yeah. Just to get back and play another game again. And that moment when you did, how did that feel? Good. Yeah, it was good. It was, it, it was good to play, but the journey on the way, though, was just as good. Mm. Like, I lived up uh, kind of your way now, Cheadle. Yeah. I was up there training in this, like... Uh, like an industrial unit type of thing, flipping tires and it was yeah, proper. Yeah. I got so ripped, I was on ridiculous shape and just that bit was good, that on the way on the way back and then I played my first game against Hull KR for Salford, 2013. Beat Hull beat KR. Was getting out of Wigan and was, and your, your normal kind of distractions and lifestyle, was that better for you to kind of focus on what you, you, your goal was by moving moving away to Cheadleware? Um, maybe I don't. I don't know. I've not thought about that. Mm. Potentially, did, did the coaching dream come from that period? Did you know? Yeah. Did, did it? So was so, it that it wasn't there before? You thinking? I, you know, I want to make this other career after rugby. Yeah, I wanted to get back play a little bit, but I always had like well, I said before. I, even when I was playing, when I was at Warrington with Breeze at St Helens, I always had the coaching eye on the actual game. Mm. I was always trying to figure out what to do with defences and etc. So I always had that coaching mind. And I looked at the game from a kind of coach's point of view. Mm. Um, learned from some good coaches over the years as well, but uh, different elements to that, not just the tactical side, like Madge's mentality uh, style stuff. And then once I got back playing, um, Longy was the assistant coach actually at Salford. So after training, after games, I'd go back with him and have a look at training on the laptop. So even though I was still playing, I'd, I'd already started thinking in my head that I'm not gonna get a lot much longer playing mm. I want to start thinking about coaching yeah a, a really good quote actually that I read about you and it's from your, your, your old boss former wasp head coach Lee Blackett and he said Gleese will, will hit you with his main point immediately and it will convince you within two minutes that this is the way to play he has a way of convincing players his body language and everything he's saying is driving positivity yeah. uh, did, did you get that mark when you were being coached by him because obviously you saw him as a player and then yeah so 
I'd, I'd say, I'm not saying it's because he's here, but Gleese is the smartest coach I've ever worked with. Um, when I was at Salford, we had the best attack. Well, we'd made more breaks, I think it was in 2016 or 2017 than any other team. Came back for pre-season training and Gleese told us that, he said, made more breaks, um, but we're going to change the way we play and attack because we're not scoring enough tries. We're too deep when we make a break, so we're going to play much flatter. And the next year, we, we killed it. No one could tackle us. We lost the grand final to Saints, but we were... For the, the squad we had, our attack was outstanding. Um, and touching on Lee Blackett's point, I'd get to training uh, probably earlier than most, and I'd get there and I'd see Gleese. He'd probably been in an hour before anybody. So that word about being committed before, he was so committed as a coach. And he'd be, I could tell he'd be, he'd be wired on, on coffee because he probably had about five or six. He'd be walking around the team room with his laptop showing each individual player the nuances of the previous week and certain running lines or certain passes and how we could change things to manipulate the defence to, to create more openings for us. And the, the level of detail as a coach on the way we attacked was, was something I'd not seen before. And, I'd, and I've worked with some pretty special co coaches in Tim Sheens and, and Brian Noble and, and uh, Ian Watson. And he took our attack to, to the next level. And um, he had an enormous amount of, of to play in the, in the success we had at, at Salford. And yeah, it's... it's um, I can easily see why he was such a good success in Union. Is, is detail like your Achilles heel? No, but see, so like when I was flash there now, so you, it's like being a player. Yeah. You you, you change, so working with, uh, obviously at Salford it was, it was different because Water was a very, Water really did all the talks, did all the thingies, didn't it? And then you just did all that detail stuff underneath. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But then going to Wasp with Lee, Lee let me do the, a lot of the stuff as well. So they're speaking to the players, the pre-game stuff. And you enjoyed that? Running meetings. So then, so then you, you, you get more rounded. Uh, you get used to other stuff and find out other stuff that you're good at or not good at. So was probably at Salford with Watto. Watto did all the talking until I'd half time, full time and all that. And I would just... just you stand back and stand kind of back and a bit the detail of detail. Stuff. And then, then the other part of it at Wasp, I got the opportunity to do a lot more of that stuff. So then you, you like, like you grow as a player or you develop as a player, you develop as a coach. Yeah. So, but then you learn as well that sometimes you can have too much detail. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And then what detail do they actually need? That's they don't need point, all actually. that detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a great point because John said over, over the years and it always stuck with me is that simplicity works just transparently across the board, doesn't it, for, for players? Yeah. Do, do you find that, that sometimes so, you're overwhelming them with yeah, information? Yeah, well, you want to be as simple as possible, but have that, in that simplicity, be as detailed as possible. It depends on the personnel, doesn't it? Understanding a yeah. front row needs to pick up, a, just catch the ball and run as hard as they can. So we want you to lay the lights, we get a quick play of the ball, and we want Moose to run the Dragons, don't no, we? No, 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 no. But do you need a one-size-fits-all <laughs> kind of talk, you know, especially when, when it's at half-time? You can't be going around and it can't be tailored for a, a whole group of players, Well, right? you've got to know what players you've got. Every team's different. Every so you've team, got to understand the personalities. You've got, and the skill sets. Yeah. You can't... I think that's where Yesin Harris messed up when he came to Salford. He tried to bring Wigan to Salford. Yeah. He tried yeah. to play like Madge uh, did or whoever did at Wigan and bring mm. it to... Two completely different sets of players and different attributes, different mentalities, and it just doesn't work. Mm. So you've got to get a pretty good bearing on what players you've got, mm. what they're like, what they're good at, what they're not good at, and then come up with a way that suits them. Yeah. And then the right tone to get them up emotionally, or they might not need that. You might just sit you, back. You, you're, I can see you, your body language has already changed just talking about coaching, because I can see how passionate you are about it, but does, does it have to align with what the head coach, and we, we've had um, head coaches on who've, worked, yeah. who've come through the system. Depends. And I know that's perhaps what you want to do, but yeah. do, do you then have, how important are those moments with Ian Watson, with um, Lee Blackett, with Eddie Jones, you know? Um, You've got to sing from the same hymn sheet, haven't you? Yeah. You can't yeah. be going in opposite there's directions. Diff there's different, there's different, yeah, you can't go in opposite directions, but you, some will give you, a, let you take 90%, some will give you 20%, do you know what I mean? So you've got to, there's, there might be constraints in what, you, what you're working with. Mm. Like, uh, but said Lee Blackett, for example, he was brilliant working with him. Like he was very, he likes his league, very attack-minded, and he just, 
I throw stuff, he might throw a counter and would agree on the best, but he, if I was adamant on it, he'd just let me do it. Mm. So, what was Watto like? No, Watto was good, Watto just left me to all that. I thought it did, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you had a great time there, didn't you? When you think back of, of sort of that journey that got you to be working with Eddie Jones in England, yeah. you know, your time at Salford, when, when Mark was there as well, yeah. that 2019 run to the grand final, yeah. I mean, they're part of the season, but yeah. what, what a beginning to your coaching journey that was. Yeah, well, it was, it was, it was a tough at the start. Obviously, we played that million pound game, didn't we? Whatever <laughs> year that was. Mark's pass. 2016. Yeah, so don't talking, don't that was <laughs> pretty, and we, how we won that game, I never know. Do you know what I mean? But then built it up slowly. And obviously, they got to the final in 19 and the Challenge Cup was it the year after, um, which was good. Uh, Wasp made a, made the final. You went from worst attack to the best attack at Wasp, didn't you? I don't know. Before you went, I'm sure it was, I, I rem know. remember reading an article where they were, they were struggling a little bit before you arrived and then. But, uh, yeah, I was struggling a little bit. Um, but then we started off the next, my first season pretty poorly. Uh, and then a really good run towards the back end. I like won like 14 out of 15 or something like that. And lost to Exeter, was it? Lost to Exeter, yeah, and Monsoon, Covid, empty, Twickenham. Did, did you find even at that stage that most people bought into you as a coach? Uh, I guess so, I don't but you, know. But you know, don't you, you yeah. as having been a player, you yeah. know when you look in their eyes if they're receiving this and they're taking it on board. And... Yeah, I think I'm pretty, I think I get on with the players pretty well on a whole. Players react to bullshit though as well. Like yeah. if somebody comes in and doesn't know the detail, yeah. like, and doesn't know the game, like Martin could have easily gone into rugby union and not known the game, right, and, and exposed himself mm. by just, just blabbing and talking his way into trouble. Mm. But if you, if you've got a deep thinking, analytical mind about the game of rugby league, and he said something before, and I just think this is the, the skill in coaching, is if you're sat on a mountain of detail, it's choosing which bits of detail that you pull the cover back and say, this is important now. Yeah. Like, if you do it, some coaches do that all the time and go, this is scattergun, everything's important, do this, yeah. do yeah, that, the and, and it's a car they? crash. No, but it's yeah. just a car crash. The players are just confused. Yeah. And, and then there's other coaches who don't know any of the detail and they fluff. And you know when a coach is fluffing you. You know yeah. when they don't know what they're talking about. No one about. likes a fluffer. Nobody likes a fluffer. Nobody but, likes a fluffer. So what I'd say with Martin is, is knowing Martin as a player and, and listening to what Martin was like as a coach is he would, he would have been all over the detail of the game and learning the detail of the game as well. Yeah, I had a leg up going to Wasp because Lee Blackett was attack coach. Yeah. And Dai Young was head coach. Yeah. So I was going in helping Lee to start with. So he had his systems and all that in place. So he was coming up with, he had like a set way of playing. I just fine tuned that way he was playing with the running lines, this and that. And then as Di got sacked a few months after he left, Lee went to head coach. I'd learned enough then to then take over that. So I was just going in there, not knowing the game exactly, completely. Yeah. yeah. I kind of had a bit of a, an helping hand that way, so I got lucky. Where, where did that, the intrigue with Union come? Am I right in saying that even sort of before Wasps so or around that time that you, Obviously, knowing Sean Edwards and yeah. being a Wigan lad and having looked up to him and watched him as a kid, that you were even going to Wales camp and seeing what not, he was doing? Not Wales camp. I'd go to his house up in Standish. He'd invite me up. When he was the Wales... When he was the Wales the defence coach. Yeah. So, yeah. dead just before the Six Nations. So, he'd be looking at England, so this is how they attack. How would you defend that in league or what would you do? So, I was doing that for a couple of years. Uh, I'd just go once each time and look through a lot of video and what drills would you do to defend that and how would you system it, whatever. How did that come about, that mental role from him? You know, how, what was it's in it for him? It's for your uncle, I think. Yeah, he's, he's, my uncle was best man at his uh, wedding. Okay. So, uh, and he oh, saw he that, was best man at my uncle's wedding, sorry. But he he's saw that passion Wigan, in you and he, he wanted, you know, he was intrigued I, by I, what I, you... I, I, honestly, God, can't Because that's a pivotal that. moment, right? Getting someone like Sean Edwards on board. In terms of the reputation that comes with well, having to ring, East ring. I remember on the way to St. Helens, East ring Lungy up and say, "What defence yeah. drills do you do here?" Yeah. He did, yeah, did yeah, he, yeah, he, did, he yeah. picks everyone's brains. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not, it's not anything new. He used to say, well, "What do you do here? What's, what's the latest thing you're doing? What you're doing on this?" Yeah, but not I everyone mean, had that sort of goodwill hunting relationship with him where you go around to his house and. Sort goodwill of, you hunting. Know, well, yeah, yeah. It's a good film. Have you seen it? Uh, well, that is, that's a measure of him. Right? Not as good as how good is yeah. that? How smart is that? Yeah. Like, we can just get over that. How smart is that from Sean Edwards? Yeah, of course it who, is. Who, who's me as a complete naive outsider looking at Sean Edwards going, he's still peddling rugby league shit from the 1990s that Wigan did. He's <laughs> not, is he? 
No. He's learning. He's and, and this that is such an undervalued skill is to be humble enough to go and ask for advice from people when you don't know what. Yeah, ask them what do you see. Yeah, how would yeah. you defend that? Hundred percent. And then he comes up with his way. I agree with it. It might take one thing that I said or someone said and use it, and not. And then that piqued my interest then. So I'm looking at how teams are attacking. I'm thinking, well, why are they doing that and why are they doing that against yeah. that dig? Why would you not do that? So then I think when Dai Young was looking for someone to help Lee Black it out, and obviously it was Sean, Sean Edwards, yeah. Sean Edwards, you got yeah. anyone with the league influence? I've worded that on Murphy. And Sean had been at Wasps already, right, at that point? Yeah, yeah. he'd been there before. So it's just, that's the way it goes, isn't it? But that was enjoyable, the Wasps, that, that sort of period of learning. Oh, yeah. deep, it was a deep learning experience, you know what I mean? I, it is, because there's a few aspects of the game that take you a while to get to get a grip of. Yeah. Um, the especially from the attack. Not as much the breakdown. I'm, that wasn't as bad. It was just the amount of different... The backfield's totally different. Scrums are completely different. Defences, the way, where the wingers and the full-backs sit. Um, how many different variations of a line-out you can have. It's like a game of chess, rugby union. Yeah. Rugby league is a game of drafts. Yeah, yeah. The, you can play the game so many different ways to suit whatever you've, personnel you've got. So the game can go so many different ways in it as well. There's so many different permutations, even at the breakdown. You can you can have an attacking breakdown a certain way, you can defend a certain way. You can choose to put different numbers of people in the back. It's so different to leave. And so somebody who absolutely buzzes off detail, that yeah. must right feed into you, right? That's got to be... It fits with you then, doesn't it? The, at any stage, anything is it possible. Is. It is, and you can play, you can play like I said, you... you if you watch a rugby league game, everyone plays just about the same way, don't they? Yeah, yeah. In Union, South Africa play completely different to New Zealand. Ireland, yeah. now under Andy Farrell, are playing very like Wigan 2010, rugby league. Yeah, yeah. Seen that. Tight, straight lines, pulling it out yeah. the back, yeah. blowing teams away. Mm. But they've got good cohesion there. So 15 out of the, 13 out of the starting 15 for Ireland, from Leinster, which yeah. is like Wigan, Great Britain back in the 90s, were yeah, yeah, the yeah, majority yeah. of the Great Britain team were the Wigan team. So they've got that. Cohesion and international rugby, there's a lot of different uh, permutations. So, like combinations and that. Yeah, combinations from clubs, but also the amount of time you get with the players. Do you know what I mean? Some are centrally contracted. With England, the clubs own the players. So, England have got to buy them often for a short period of time. And leading into a Six Nations, you might only get four training sessions with them. Do you know what I mean? So, you don't get to build a lot. You don't yeah. have a pre season. Whereas a World Cup, that's where it all evens itself out because they'll get eight, nine weeks of proper pre-season with them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's were, different. Were you always intrigued about what the other code was doing? Uh, no, I'd always watch the Six Nations, like, but... Did, it, did, it, did you have a kind of, you know, the separation, look down on, you know, was there that, or, or were you a bit Not more accepting really. of I'd, the other? I'd, I'd, I'd never really watched the club game. I used to love watching Brian O'Driscoll and Gordon Darcy play for Ireland. They were the centers. Centers. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Um, but you were like, you were like, you played a bit like O'Driscoll. Yeah, you did, yeah. Didn't you? Well, that's my... Uh, yeah, that, yeah, you were definitely like yeah. O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll like, 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 played like Gleese. I used to like watching <laughs> them play. But then but then the game's changed from 10 years ago now. The game now is becoming way more attacking. Yeah. Like the French at the weekend were unbelievable. Ireland, the way they're playing. So the game, maybe even from three, the World Cup 2019 yeah. final, it was all box kicking, and uh, the games for me, it's it's, it's moving on from well, the that. likes of Farrell have had a big say in that, haven't they? Farrell has had a big say in it. Obviously, New Zealand have always played quite open. Yeah. But there's some fun fundamentals in the game that you can't not have, and that's your set piece. Like yeah. if you're not going to set piece, you're not winning. So, yeah. like I said, it's it's a complex game that you can you can figure out so many different ways of playing that they will suit the strengths of your team. Let's rewind a little bit before we, you get to England. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm just trying to think of the timeline here. It was around 2019. Was, this, was that still sort of Adams Park Wasps or had they gone to Coventry at that Coventry, stage? Coventry, Coventry, so, so, yeah. so you're not really down south, 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 are you? But no. did, did all the, did all the sort of the, the, the stigmas, the, uh, the stereotypes, the cliches, did they all ring true to you going into rugby union, being in that world? You're smiling. No, there's just some, there's just some f funny differences. A lot that, of the, I like that story oh, where you told the big front row to carry it. Right. So my first, so this is this is a perfect example of detail. Yeah. <laughs> right. So we're working on the way we want to play, and and I was running, working on the running lines and this and that, and then the first game, I thought they've gone, everything was right and everything was, but they weren't running fucking hard. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No one was running hard, and I had one of the props. I got him in. I said, "Mate, what do you think of that carry there?" And he said, 
proper posh. What do you mean? <laughs> I said, just run fucking hard. He went, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> I yeah. beg you, pardon. I beg you pardon. So the difference is manners. <laughs> yeah, so we got manners. But, I beg uh, your pardon. There's a, there's a good mix. There's a lot of like, uh, they're just it's exactly most of the lads are exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Same banter, same crack. Um, a few lads went to Eton and, and that whatever, yeah. Yeah, especially in the England setup. But banter's exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. So was there a transition for you personally or not? Or did you just slip right in there? No, not, uh, not, not really. It was yeah. fine. Especially the England boys. The England yeah. boys are sound ass. Yeah, good, good lads. lads. Yeah. Really good lads. Yeah. Uh, look, you, you, had, you had two years working in Union from a guy that's come from league. And I know people, we've seen it on the, the playing side of things with Jason Robinson and you know, mm. obviously Farrell as a player. But two years is not a long time for a coach to then be recruited by England, is it? Really? No, but I think Eddie, li Eddie likes his league is, I think, and... Uh, Obviously, John Clark was there as well, so I probably had a little bit of a, a leg up in that. But yeah, I got the call um, to go with them, which was a whole different experience again. How did that relationship with Eddie start? How did the whole, how did that all come about? The England role? Um, I don't know. I just got major got a call uh, halfway through one of the the last season, and it just it just went from there. It was on, and then it wasn't because England had to do a review because he had a poor. 21 six nations and then it was on off and then uh anyway they ended up, i ended up going just on the last just before the next preseason started which left was in the shit really but lee blackett said you can't not go mm. um so england paid a transfer fee and i think they got john mitchell the other way because he put his handed his resignation in yeah from england and but how, they, but how, how was it to... working with eddie different he was, he was like a psycho. Right, Alan's an outside <laughs> looking in, and that man's a psychopath. He's crazy. He's definitely got psychopathic tendencies. He's a crazy man. <laughs> I'd, right, I don't know anything about what working with him would be like. I'd imagine you'd just be like walking your dog at four in the morning, and Eddie, you'd just look at your phone, Eddie Jones. You're like, what? FaceTime or just phone call? WhatsApp start about four in the morning when oh, you do they? Does he yeah. Four in the morning? He doesn't stop right. The you, man you is you a machine. You send emails at four a.m., John. I don't know who does it. You know, you hear of all these CEOs of these, they get four hours sleep. Yeah. And they they work hundred not hours a week or whatever. If there's in that many hours in a week, he's one of them. He does not stop. Give us an example of a four a.m. message. Just he puts something on our coach's WhatsApp group. It'll be a clip of like the I hate to be an analyst who works for him because he'll just send them. Get me a clip of this. They're up all night finding stuff. So put a clip on. It might just be a twenty second clip from. Could be South V Roosters. Yeah. yeah. Could be Anything. Japanese clubs. Uh, what do you see or something like that? So comment this on the attack or that on the defence. And it's just throwing them out there all the time or meeting in here or whatever it is, but it's just non-stop till 11, 12 at night. And it's like that every day when you're Seven days. Does he have a day off? No, Did Eddie Jones Christmas have a day, day get, you get WhatsApps. No, <laughs> you would do. Merry Christmas. Eight days you you would dig out that Mate, chocolate. honest to God, the man, Eddie, <laughs> the man, <laughs> right, so we've, we've been camp, we've been camp all, we've been training all day. Uh, honest to God, I don't know, what is he, 62? I don't know where he gets his energy from. The bloke is a Maybe he had some of that supplement that he had when he <laughs> yeah, was <laughs> <Oxy Elite. laughs> MHA. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then go out for dinner at night and he'd be on the red wine until yeah, 11, wine, 11 12. Yeah. And then boom, starts again for so the morning. So he works hard, plays hard, both? Yeah, it doesn't stop. Wow. Is he a bigger stickler for detail than you? No, he's, he's, not, he's not that... Uh, He's not that kind of coach, really, I don't think. Uh, he's stickler for detail, as in, he'll have a meeting with the rugby coach, he'll have a meeting with the medical, he'll have a meeting with the S&C, and that will take up. He just doesn't stop. Mm. And then he'll, I want to know what he's doing, that player's doing, what's his training plan when he's with his club, what's his training plan, what's his skill work on, mm. how much is he doing, I want video evidence of it. I want, so the lads who are training at the club doing passing or squatting they've got to send little videos in whatsapp it's he has to have mm. he's there's no what stone left to turn, yeah no yeah. stone left to turn on that side of it how how important is presence as a coach yeah i think it's pretty big because he has presence yeah, doesn't he big presence. i don't know what it is do you yeah. know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. i don't know him but i know he's got presence yeah he has got presence and yeah. i don't know what that is i don't know how you measure it either will you know when certain coaches walk in you think oh 
and they get your attention mm. on respect like instantly. But, but he's I'm four, like, foot, four foot six and a half. Presence. Presence. Andy see... Farrell might have presence because he's fucking massive. Yeah. And but of what he's achieved as a player in yeah. both courts, I reckon he's got presence from his aura. But as Eddie, well as Eddie Jones has got a presence mm. that I can't put my finger on. I look at him and I go, the, a certain was, je ne sais quoi. Well, yeah, he's just got, he's dead in the eyes. Mm. He's got nothing. He, he's got Soulless. that thousand yard stare. But players want to die for him, right? You know, we've had Haskell on this podcast. He's yeah. run through a brick wall for it. Yeah, he's got that. He's, he's, what, he's, what he's very good at is... Is Haskell a big name, Mark? I don't know, you love him. Stop talking. Talking to the, like, the pre-back speeches, the telling the story. He'll paint a picture. So we'll go walk around the, the room with the lads at Penny Hill and he'll paint a picture of the journey you're on and that kind of thing. And, and that good, Is he a good speak, storyteller? Yeah, very good storyteller. That's yeah. his, for me, that's probably, I think, the one thing that I've probably not seen anyone, him do better than everyone else mm. he tells a story and puts something in your mind and paints a picture yeah that's yeah, what yeah. he's very good at what was your relationship like with him one-on-one -on -one? you know you when you, uh, you, when you had that first sort of video analytical do you like you got it, was, it was, it was, it was good I, I got on with him pretty good he's he's let's just say he's very hard taskmaster especially on the coaches um I but wasn't too bad with him, but you're committed, so you'd yeah. probably lie on you. But he, even so, he's he's he broke a lot of them, didn't he? Yeah, there's yeah, but, but, yeah. It's very it's you have to be a certain kind of character to survive. Yeah, some, that pe some people easily give in. Is that right? Is that the right way to do it? Is my question. I don't know what. I don't know. Is that the right Depends way? Depends if you if you I win it, isn't I've it? I've known people who've. Uh, well, I know someone who went there and after uh, did lasted less than a week. I okay. believe. Well, Eddie Br said that's Brett it. No, they. Oh, they go. did really. With Brett Orson. No, he's not started yet. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll give him two. Um, <laughs> Eddie took on the RFU as well. There's not many England coaches that have done that. You know, he took on the institution, didn't he? Yeah, but and then I think. He did because I think rugby. There's not a lot of what he said is actually not too far off the mark because it's a couple of England probably. How do I say this? Um, the system's probably not as good in England, like he mentioned. Yeah. So like a, an island, I said that before. The yeah. way the way it's ran, the way the like up our way. I mean, teams play. You have to go to a private school, play rugby union. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Word, the word thing that you probably you went to private school, didn't you? I was on a, I was on a sports see the scholarship. Up his ass, like. I fly yeah. off and I was on a sports fly scholarship. Off, fly fly off. Off. I was. Of course I am. What a grand I final place. Call fly, I, re, I just call fly it ten. I've, refused, I've never said fly off once since I've been in the union. It's a fly half. A ten. Fly a stand off half. Yeah. Ellis yeah. <laughs> Genge, who, who captain England. Good lad. Yeah, he was one of the only lads to come from a working class background to yeah. captain or a, a council estate background. Loves his league. Does he? Loves it. He's one of the few forwards who like the league. Bristol boy. He loves carrying yeah. like carrying in that. Yeah, yeah. He? he wants to play. He actually was meant to. John Clark spoke to me not long ago before we left, and he wanted. He was meant to go up to Wigan for a couple of days, train with him. He loves it. He'd, he'd love to play a league. Yeah, he yeah. just won't get the same. Coin. No. Don't Faz and George Ford want to play a league as well? Faz loves his league. So when we was in camp in the autumn, the World Cup was on the semi-finals and that. Go upstairs, games on the. TV, most of the lads were in there watching the rugby league. Yeah, Vina, yeah. Vina Paulers, uh, uh, Manu. Manu loves it. Marcus Smith, mm. Faz, loves league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they play for loves Wigan, it. I asked him that. Um, what did he say? I think he would. Can't do it. I'm earning shit loads at computers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Telling Lennon to show me the bounce give us the final answer. what he'd play. He'd probably be. A be bit like you, you're 13, like a ball me, playing 13. A really good ball playing 13. So what you're saying is me and Owen Farrell are very similar. <laughs> no. Not saying that, nobody's no. saying that. He can lay a line better, can't he? Do, yeah. do you think Eddie deserved to lose his job in the end? At time, was time up? Uh, Couldn't take him any further? I don't know. I think, look, not, I think probably should have gone, left it till after the World Cup, potentially, because obviously we weren't getting the Eddie was smart enough to realize England was always a set piece team and and kicking and probably lost that dominance a little bit as of late and we started trying to just play a little bit more in certain aspects but just to, like you saw a few examples of it, but it weren't fully clicking just yet 
Um, we had four, three defeats or two defeats in the in the autumn. Games we should have won if we'd have mm. probably just focused probably a couple of areas we should have focused on a little bit more, come up with a couple more points and would have would have got that, especially the Argentina game. Um, but then obviously it's not panned out that way and then Steve's gone in there now and probably stripped it back to the kicking and power and set piece, but like I don't. F no, not well. It looked the evidence against France that we're talking about right now is that there's the kicking, powerful set piecey thing was not. <laughs> well, the, 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 the first, the, the, first time they've been boozed. It took Steve, Steve's for a, a like, decade. I don't really know. I've only met him a couple of times, but he's maybe an unbelievable detailed technician of the yeah. line out, and that's significantly improved. And the scrum on the cockers since autumn. That was a bit of a Achilles heel for us in autumn. Yeah. So, like I said, if you're trying to play rugby. You've yeah. got to have your back up with your set piece. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. have to have it. Yeah, yeah. We didn't really have that, but they've, they've gone in and improved the set piece massively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they still pulling needs to be another level to what, yeah, they, what they're sure. doing. For sure. Twickenham, Gleese, discuss. John Wilkins has been critical of it in the past. You know, oh, no. no, but in yeah. general, people say you know. Been an England game. Yeah, I've been I think a few. It's good. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's all right. I think. I Which think games it, have you been? New Zealand, I went to Well, the Australia. one this one? No, no, this is like in the last 10, 15 years. When you know Rory I mean? Underwood and that were playing. Yeah. Go Watch. on, you've been more than all of us. No, I, mean, I, I think it's a good atmosphere. But it's it, different. It's a different atmosphere. Maybe, oh, yeah. It's a very different atmosphere, Mark. It is. It's, it's, it's a tox I think it's a toxic atmosphere at times. I think if things aren't going well, they get on the back of, of the team, which I don't think so. Do you know what it sounded like to me watching the England-France game at the weekend? 80,000 people who think they know best mumbling. In red chinos. In red chinos. Probably drive Range Rovers. Probably really happy. Yeah. Probably really happy. Probably Rich. not cynical. No, I'm joking. I'm generalising. I just think the atmosphere, the atmosphere I've been, it's been great. And I've been yeah. as well, and the atmosphere is just it's been different. a bit... Rugby it's different. Rugby, rugby Union crowd is totally different to a league yeah, crowd. Go on, like, explain it. It's just, well, they don't sing songs and chant and have a go at the opposition, you know what I mean? When you, when you look back on your, your time there with Eddie, and you yeah. know, when we forget Eddie, just you, Martin Gleeson, attack coach England, it was an incredible achievement to get to that, that level yeah. and a different code. Do, do you see your time there as a success? Yeah, because I've come out of it a better coach. There's, uh, and I've met some work with some brilliant players. I think the stuff that Eddie gets you doing off the field, the... So he'd, bring, he'd fly over blokes from, a bloke from America who's a teaching specialist, he flew in this psychologist from uh, Norway. Yeah. And they'd have like three, four days with just the coaches on how you pre present to the lads, how much detail you should go, how many don't use more than this, how much stuff you can actually remember when you sit down there. Do you know what I mean? And you see it. I've been back to clubs since loads of times. And the, you're watching something on telly, everyone get it? Yeah, yeah going through about 10 different clips, no one said a word, and you don't know if they've took any of that in whatsoever. No, it's and they've had people coming in showing us like how, how much information people can absorb, the best way that you learn and keep that information, because everyone learns different. So all that kind of stuff that's not running lines and stuff like that, the other side of the coaching stuff that you've, you learn when you're in that environment mm. is... So you've been on like a coach boot camp? You've been, you've been on a coach... Like Coach boot camp with like psychologists and like sports scientists yeah. and experts from around the world. Yeah. What 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 if anything did Eddie Jones get wrong? If you learn anything from your time there, was that not? I'm not talking technically, tactically. I'm not talking any of that. As like as a manager of people, as a coach, what if anything did he not get right? Uh, well, I think coaches have shelf lives. Yeah. I think you've seen it. Uh, there's a couple of exceptions, but maybe Jurgen Klopp's at the minute struggling. May this, this maybe on pill, seven, eight years. Maybe he's just you know I said to you that he's brilliant at coming up with stories, and if you've probably but if you've heard that for seven, eight years yeah. on the boats, maybe yeah, it's, run out of stories. It's you, you're, yeah, it's yeah. tough, and then you maybe start coming away from looking at silver bullets or other things rather than the basics. I don't know, so. Maybe it was just a longevity thing. Maybe maybe should have pulled up in after the a certain period yeah. of time. He and seems to be fighting fresh. a lot of fires as well. It reminded me a bit of like mm. a, you know somebody fighting war on two fronts. The media and the press. He was always sort of. It felt like he was always just antagonising them a little bit. 
you know. And he, he sort of got away with that, actually. Yeah. He's quick, quick. He's very quick with he, yeah. very smart. And he, and he just get people in a one sense. that battle. Yeah. 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 He, he played, did he play a lot of mind games with the press, like, before a game? He, he loved that. He, yeah. He'd, he'd, like, deflect from the team at a certain point or he'd set an agenda on something else just... Just for it, yeah, you know. probably. I don't. I'm not when I'm in camp. I'm not looking at. It, it almost felt press. towards the end that he was just like, get rid of him if you want. I'm not that bothered. You know, he's done his time. Whatever. Did he really believe that he could take them onto the next level after another World Cup? I don't know. I think. I think Six Nations is always tough, but then having a pre-season at World Cup, that's when you can make a a, a difference, mm. a big difference. So, I think he'd have been obviously. Gutted, but now he's straight in with the Wallabies who they've got a cracking squad. They had a lot of injuries last year. Um, and I think England no could doubt potentially England will face meet Australia yeah, exactly. in the quarters you know it's semis. Happen, yeah. Yeah. Quick Cooper's back, isn't he? he yeah, so that could be tasty. Enough about Eddie Jones. Let's finish with you. Um, do, do you want to be a head coach? Not yet. Not yet. But not now? Co- not now. A couple of years, three, four years maybe. But just not quite yet. What, what, what in three, four years will make you ready? I just think I want, obviously, after I want another crack somewhere as an attack coach, put my stamp on it, put my uh, ideas out there. What, what is your philosophy as a coach? Well, it depends on. I'll, I'll play a way that suits the players I've got mm. and try and get the best out of the, the group that you've got. And league union, not bothered? Um, I'll, I'll Probably union. I, I, I know it's tough the, the league is, but it's the way the union's going. You can get shit games in both ga- codes. Like I watched the game the other week, Super League. I'm, I'm, I was bored to tears. Mm-hmm. So if, if you do the counter argument, so it was always all kicking oh, no. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, the counter argument when I watch league sometimes now, all it goes is one up carry, one up carry, one up carry times five kick, mm-hmm. one up carry, one up carry, one up carry times five kick, and that's but the game. You can have so many different... You can have good and bad games in both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, people are too... It's a, such a lazy analysis to say yeah. union is predictable and league, league is interesting. I, I agree completely. And I, and I hate how chippy rugby league people are about rugby union. Yeah. You know, like, I click on, like, read a newspaper and underneath there's comments about England getting beat by France and yeah. I just sort of casually click and there's people, you know, and there's somebody who'll go in there... Le- oh, leagues way better than Union. I'm like, w- what is that common even but It's doing tribal it? and geographical. You've been guilty of that in no, the past. No, but it's eh? just not even part of the argument. Yeah, that It's just so out of touch with... Th- there's like this weird competition between the sports that just doesn't need to exist. Mm. No. It doesn't. They're you both great games. Yeah, you, do, you don't look... Like some of the... You won't see some better attack than what fans did at the weekend. No. Do you know what I mean? The way they move the ball, the offloads, the close support, the kick, kicks, the... Yeah. The the it was unbelievable. Well, and Ireland Scotland was like watching, like you said earlier, it was like watching a league game, wasn't it? Ireland Scotland not as much, but say Ireland France the other week, yeah. brilliant game. Italy Ireland, yeah, amazing. like land breaks galore. Yeah, it's Do you tough. know what I mean? Just edgy seat stuff, and then you the Wales England game, boring as bad shit. Yeah, same yeah. as well, the game we watched the other week in league. I can't remember what it was. It was that boring. I turned it off for twenty five <laughs> minutes. Was no, John yeah. commentator? Well, there was a punditry as well. It was terrible. It was terrible. Pundit of the year nominee. Punditry is <laughs> awful. Um, you've, been back doing, Steve you've, been you've been doing some work with. You can never get rid of Sean Long, can you? Ever, if you, as much as I'm you try. I'm not doing work with him. I went up one day. Oh, was that what he was? Yeah. One day? He asked one. you in. Uh, just uh, said, what you joined, doing? didn't he? Yeah, I just went in and then just ended up joining in one uh, last couple of Wednesdays ago, I think it yeah. was. So I've just been up there one day. So at the moment you're sponging, you're waiting, you're buying your time for the Dead right lifting. opportunity. Deadlifting. What are you deadlifting, I love that he just gets back in the gym. That's yeah. amazing. Just when, when the shit's the fan. Yeah. 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 What's that? Train. Six pecs just train. Do, do bench. Not as much as I Lo- used to. Loves a bit of bench, Martin, doesn't he? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to get back into my big lifts. One of my favourite Glee stories is when we was on tour in 2006 and he, we'd been out for a beer in the Stein, the pub in Manly. Well, great pub right on the corner. We'd been out for a beer. And <laughs> the Glee was, Glees was rooming with Paul Wood and we got pissed. We were all pissed and Glee was particularly drunk at the time. And uh, um, I actually don't know what's coming here. No, no I've sanitised it enough. It's, it's not the story about no. his mum back in that one that you told her that we can't tell. No. No, uh, no, no, no. You, you want was a cleaner? Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's, Can't yeah. tell that one. No. That's it's not that on bad. telly, apparently. It's not, it doesn't say, it sounds worse. Gleese is going to be thinking, what is it? It's no, not no, that no. bad. We'll tell it on the extra section. Well, Gleese was drunk asleep, and um, it, it's, you know, it, it just... <laughs> <laughs> 
he he played the guitar a lot at this stage, so um, oh. there was just a guitar case on the bed. Uh, it, Gleese, had, there's a little bit of toilet-based issues just prior oh, to right. bed, and uh, Gleese, Gleese, instead of getting under the duvet, decided to uh, just him. pull his guitar case over himself <laughs> and fall asleep. <laughs> Can like some sort of Jim Morrison that, tribute. That'll be the same night then. Remember when Longy said he was going home? Yeah. And you was, was you remember Longy? Re- <laughs> yeah. Not be not be knocked on the door. Oh. And when he got on the, got oh, on the no. bed, Sean Long. Yeah, slide. so Sean Long wet the bed <laughs> on 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 tour. And uh, Brian every, Noble, every Brian, night, didn't we? Yeah, but Sean then Brian he Noble. He pissed on your passport, wasn't well, he? He did, yeah. And <laughs> Brian Noble had to go in and tell him, you know, talk about whether he's going and and Sean. Let him lay on the patch, the patch of wood. And well, then said, just lie down. You might want to move, Brian, because I yeah. didn't wet the bed last night. And then Nobby, yeah, he, he didn't, didn't he even acknowledge sli- it. He just slipped off the, <laughs> slipped off the bed. <laughs> Fucking hell. <man. laughs> slipped onto the floor, and that was As it. As if nothing happened. Yeah. Nothing to see here. <laughs> I think it's pretty oh, illegal, to, illegal, illegal to piss in a passport, actually, isn't it? Yeah. It's a bit like burning a £10 note or something. The story about Gleese is. Well, it wasn't. Oh, we, we, to no, no, we'd been back to. We, me and Mark, a lot of us had gone back to mine's house, and it was a great. Yeah, that house, I love that house that you had. Yeah. It, was it you can say where, right? Up Holland. Yeah, yeah. Was it Up Holland? Yeah. Yeah, like amazing house. Like, so yeah. we went back there and we'd had a few beers and stuff. I fell asleep on we, the. You'd all had a drink? Oh! On the couch. <laughs> and then. <laughs> the morning after. So yeah, the morning oh. after. Oh. So oh. 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 It was my dad. It was his dad. Gleese's yeah. dad. Deep. Gleese's dad. It all look at it was Martin, Martin. <laughs> anyway, I was asleep on the couch. There was there was a paused, paused adult movie on the TV. Um, just to finish, yeah. do you see a romantic side in you and kind of going, coming back to the league as a head coach one day? Can you see yourself at Wigan? Can you see yourself going for a grand final at Wigan? Listen, one thing you, you just don't know in sport. You do not have a clue. No, you just you spoke before about being a dark place in Cheadle and thingy. Then you're playing. Then you're back coaching, then you're at Wasp, then you're at England. And then now, I don't know at the minute, do you know what I mean? I'm looking what my next opportunities and projects can be. You just don't know what's around the corner. Mm. You could be anywhere doing anything. Cheers. Thank you very much for coming in. Really appreciate no that. Awesome. Um, don't forget to follow and subscribe on YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. Vote, vote for us. Where do people uh, vote? Let me get that address. Just one second, John. It's something like sportspodcastgroup.com. Nobody's uh, going to do it. I assume you put a www. So, well, it's well, not very catchy, is it? Well, if they do rate but us, it's, it's got to be five, hasn't it? Five stars. HTTP <laughs> semicolon backslash backslash sportspodcastgroup.com. Come on, it'll be funny. There's only two rugby league podcasts in there. It'll be funny. Who's the other one? Who's the other one? Who's the other one? I don't know. It's a women's rugby league one. The rest of rugby union. So, you know, you decide. Yeah. Um, and also, Come give us. us a like. Five stars only. Oh, like me, like me, like me. Pathetic. Five stars. Five stars. Did we get fun? We get a few threes. <laughs> we do get a few threes. We'll probably get a few threes more Three's more demoralising. Actually, three's yeah. the most demoralising score. Don't give us a three. Four point eight and upwards. I'd rather get a zero or yeah. a one. See you next time.